So I thought it might be valuable to kind of go over how I organize a project in Premiere. And this really applies to any editing software that you're using. I happen to use Premiere, but this would work for Final Cut or Vegas or whatever else you happen to be using. I've worked with a lot of people over the years and a lot of different editors and everyone's got their own style, but the number one thing that you need to do is make sure that your projects are organized, especially if you're working in a team environment and even if you're doing something on your own because nine times out of 10, you're gonna have to go back and you're gonna track something down and if it's not organized, that's gonna be a problem. So let's dive right in. First up, you can kind of see my, my bins up here, my folders, and I do it real simple. Sequences, audio, AE, graphics, video. And those are kind of my main folders that I, I use all the time. Those are my templates. But let's look at what's in each one of them. So under sequences, I put a little asterisk up there, a little star, just so that it's always top of the list because sequences are the most important thing when you're editing. So then under there, we've got rough, Rev1, Rev2, Final, and Source. And these are kind of self-explanatory, and you might think, why do I need to do this? This is so pointless. Well, six months from now, when you reopen the project and you have no idea where you were and you need to make a change, this helps you keep it really organized so you can find it again. And if you have to hand off the project to somebody else, they can open it and go, hey, I need, you know, I know he was on Rev2, I need to make Rev3, boom, it's right there, I can get, get to it. It's not like just a mess of files. It's really apparent when you open someone else's project and you actually start diving through their stuff where your own inefficiencies are. So get on a program like this and it'll really help you out. So what goes in the rough cut folder? Exactly what you think, the rough cut sequence. Now this might be one sequence, it might be 10 sequences, it just depends on the project and the amount of videos you're creating from that set of footage. But usually it's gonna be, you know, maybe like one or two sequences, unless you're doing, like I said, a lot of videos. Then what I always do every time, every every time I'm editing, I always duplicate my sequences when I go into the revision phase. Now, I do this because I want to edit um, without deleting any of my work, right, uh, non-destructively. When I go into a revision, maybe I make a change or maybe I do something that in revision two, I actually want to go back to what I had in the rough cut. Well, I have it. I've kept it. I've saved it right there. Um, you know, so these would get duplicated every time I'm doing a revision and even into the final. So by the end of the project, I've got, you know, four separate copies of the same sequence, all at different stages of the project. And as for the actual sequence names, um, I try to name them something really descriptive so that if I need to search it later, I can find it. So, you know, I always tag it with rough and I usually give it a name that I'm going to want to use later when I'm uploading to YouTube or Vimeo or something like that so I don't have to retitle it later. That's always a pain. And it just helps you keep everything consistent from, you know, finder where your source files are and on the hard drive to in the Premiere project and then ultimately to where they're going to be living online. Um, you might notice a source folder. You could call this whatever you want, but really this is just kind of for all your extra stuff that you don't always need, but it's good to have. So if you were going to go through a bunch of B-roll and pick select shots, you know, make a couple sequences under here. Maybe you're at a different location, so it makes sense to do, you know, desert B-roll, forest B-roll, ocean B-roll, or whatever. Um, put those there, and that way you've made your selects, you have them, you can use them for whatever edit you need, and then you can always go back and get them right there. I usually make a color folder so that when I'm coloring something, maybe like an interview, I'll do color work to just like one or two clips in my timeline, and then I'll copy that to all the other matching clips uh, throughout my main sequence. And that way I can always go back right there to like, that's kind of where my source color is from. So if someone else were to open the project, they could go, Oh, you know, I want to I want to tweak that color. Where was where was he saving that? Oh, it's right in the color folder, obviously. And then most of the time on my projects, I have a sync uh, operation of some kind. I know some people use pluralize. A lot of the time, I'm doing it by by hand, just because I can uh, usually do it a little quicker that way. But I'll make a, a folder for all my sequences that I've synced. So if I've got multiple interviews or um, just multiple scenes that I need to sync, I'll have them all in there. That way. If, you know, in my edit, in my timeline, something gets messed up, I can always go back to the original sync and, and kind of pull it back and I don't have to resync things later on. It's all about saving time and being organized saves you a lot of time. Then we've got the audio folder. Again, pretty self-explanatory, self but I'll go through it real quick. Music, 
I've got a purchased and a preview folder. A lot of times you're downloading just kind of a sample or preview version of the song before you purchase it. This makes it really clear, okay, did I buy that track or was it, st was it still watermarked? Rather than having to listen to it or hoping that you had it named right, you have the folders that kind of guide you to where you're, where you're going to go. Um, got a field folder. This is for all the field audio recorded in the field. So you could set this up however you want. The more organized you are, the better. But a lot of times I'll have interviews, you know, and then maybe even um, Stacy interview, something like that, where it's broken down. So if I'm hunting down something real specific, I can filter it just visually, and I don't have to go search for a particular file. I can just kind of follow the path. It's all about leaving breadcrumbs for you down the road or someone else. Or you could do it, you know, by day. So you have a day one, you can make a day two, day three, and I usually associate the date if I'm doing anything by day, just so it's real clear that day one was on this date. And yes, that's from 2011, but it's just a template folder. So 1111 seemed like a good set of numbers for day one. Anyway, sound effects, SFX. Uh, I don't, you know, sometimes you have a lot of these, sometimes you have a few. Um, it just depends on the project. I usually have the folder there just so I remind myself to, hey, if you got a sound effect, put it here. Also got a VO folder for voiceover. This I have set up very similarly to my sequence because oftentimes when you're doing voiceover, you'll have, you know, scratch voiceover, then you'll have a rough, rev one, rev two, rev three, rev four, and then a final. This helps it keep, keep it real clear what's where and you can find it really easily without having you know 15 files in a row and you're looking through trying to find the one you're looking for. AE, this happens a lot. Uh, this is where I kind of dump all my comps if I'm doing any kind of dynamic linking with After Effects. It doesn't apply to everyone but it's helpful to have just because that stuff doesn't really fit anywhere else and if it's something from After Effects, you know, a, a dynamic linked comp, I'd put it in this folder. Then I've got the graphics folder, and again, very self-explanatory, but I'll go through it. you got your logo, folder, titles, vector. So I like to make a logo folder just because that's usually the most important thing, especially if I'm working on something that needs logos. Um, but I'd also make like a photo folder, which you maybe download something from the web, maybe you've got stock uh, photos, and these can get real specific. Like I said, you know, maybe you do like a forest folder, or you do uh, ocean you want to help yourself, give yourself those breadcrumbs so when you're going through all this, you know exactly where you need to go. Oh, I need that stock photo of the ocean. Where was that at? Oh, it's probably in the ocean folder. And I should say that all of this stuff should match up with how you've got the files sorted on the hard drive. It's, you know, one thing to have your uh, Premiere project organized, but it's really important to have your hard drives organized so that the actual, where the file's living can be found later on. Now, a titles folder, that's probably if, you know, if you're going to make a title in, inside of Premiere. So if you're going to make a title, um, you could call it uh, name lower third, you know, or something like that. And you type it in, you make it look nice, however you want to do it, and you put it in the titles folder. That way you have those and you know, um, these might, maybe you made them in uh, Photoshop or After Effects or however you made them, but you can put them right there and uh, get them easily and they're easily accessible and you can find them if you're looking for them. And finally the vector folder. I uh, don't use this a whole lot in Premiere but it's certainly important for After Effects and it just matches up with how I organize everything in Finder. So if I'm going to import uh, vector files, um, I like to keep those separate from my photo files like my JPEGs and my PNGs so just so I know what's rasterized and what's actually vector information so I can use it app appropriately. Usually logos would be vectors but I pull them out separately um, just because they are so important, but you could do it however you want. Maybe this makes sense to go in the vector folder or vice versa, but I like to do it like this. And finally, the video folder. We've got the RAW folder, and it doesn't matter if you're actually shooting RAW with a red camera or something. This is just the RAW footage that was shot. Oh, look at Premiere saving my project. Thank you. Um, so B-roll, you know, maybe all your B-roll shots go in there and maybe again you break it down by forest, ocean, desert. I don't know what you're shooting. It's probably something cool if it has to do with nature, but hey, that's awesome. Um, or you could do by day, like we were talking about with the, the audio. So, you know, day one, day two, uh, day three, day four, or, you know, interviews, or I shoot, I don't know, probably just depends on your project, how you want to do it. But being organized is really, really important 
because finding this stuff and knowing exactly where it's at saves you lots of time. Maybe you have a stock folder for you know the stock footage that you you bought or downloaded or whatever. You can put that there and again organize it. And finally, another web folder like maybe you downloaded something from YouTube and you want to use it. Stick it there because you didn't film it and maybe you didn't pay for it, but it can go there. You can also add other folders, whatever you want, whatever makes sense to you. But also keep in mind what makes sense to other people because if you ever work in a team environment and you probably should because you know filmmaking or video is a collaborative process it's good to have this stuff organized at least get get on the same page um, with how you do things with, with other people so that when they open the project they can go okay this makes sense I can follow it it's not frustrating it takes you five percent more time up front to you know name things and sort things and organize them but it'll save you five hundred percent of the time down the road when you have to go back to a project that you're unfamiliar with or that you haven't looked at in a year. So I made this um, real quick and you can make it every time but I really suggest that you save it um, as a template somewhere you know just save it the Premiere project itself just blank like this save it as a template and you can just reference that you know save it to your desktop so you have it on hand that way you don't have to make this folder sequence every time and you just know hey I got everything and you know what you'll find times where you know, you're editing a project and you got something real specific make a new folder you know make a new category I'm sure I don't have everything captured here something's probably gonna come up and you're like ah that doesn't fit anywhere make a new folder you know do this however you want whatever makes sense but just be organized because it is so frustrating when you're you're working on a project that someone else did and it's just a list of files and you're spending hours just going through tracking down where where's that audio file where's the footage why can't I find this they shot this I know they did where is that if you do it like this you'll be organized you make yourself happy and you make everyone else happy and that's what it's all about.